plethora of really interesting uh, uh, cells for a scientist to study and ultimately to try to cure those genetic diseases. Diseases like diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases, they have the common feature that a particular kind of cell is missing or lost. Let me give two examples. In Parkinson's, a midbrain neuron is missing. In type 1 diabetes, the pancreatic beta cell that makes insulin is missing. So if you have cellular deficiencies like that on one hand, and it's stem cells on the other which can make any cell in the body, Scientists want to try to connect the dots. How do you take a stem cell and turn it into a midbrain neuron for Parkinson's or a beta cell for diabetes? And that problem is an interesting one. It's a challenging one. How does a cell know which genes to turn on and off? What signals does it receive from adjacent cells? Can we recapitulate or reproduce those signals in a culture dish to tell the cell what to do? So that's the challenge we face now and the years ahead. Currently, we don't know enough about human embryonic stem cells for treatments, but adult stem cells are being used for blood and skin therapies. Adult stem cells are a part of the way we treat people every day. That stem cell research generally is something that has been very productive for new life-saving therapies. So these are people with malignancies, cancers like lymphoma, like multiple myeloma, like Hodgkin's disease, to see if we can't now improve their outcome. So what we've been focusing on is the fact that stem cells, we define them by what they do in a very complex setting, what they do in the body. And what we've discovered is that the environment provides some very fundamental cues that teaches the cell what to do. We're now trying to harness those and to manipulate those to make them work in a more efficient manner in a setting where we might need them. And that we've found we can do with certain kinds of drugs. Some drugs that are actually already available now look as if they can have an impact on that environment and make a difference for the stem cell. And so that's what we're now testing in patients. One of the uh, populations of cells, of adult stem cells, that actually works extremely well are skin grafts. So it's possible to take a piece of skin and uh, take the keratinocytes, which are the skin cells, and grow them in culture. And they will fill the plate. And if you grow them under the right conditions as a sheet, you can actually have a sheet of cells that can be placed on a burn wound. All that was necessary to be able to generate these sheets and sheets of skin was to take a tiny area of the patient's unburn skin, place those cells in the culture, expand the cultures, produce dishes and dishes of skin stem cells that were the patient's own stem cells. So when these cells are grafted back onto the patient, the patient doesn't reject these cells, they're his own stem cells or her own stem cells. In cases where uh, patients have very serious burns, where the bulk of their body surface has been burned, it is the only way uh, to be able to keep these patients alive and to allow them to, uh, to eventually function again. But with all their promise, adult stem cells have limitations. They are rare. We don't know if they exist in all tissues, and they are difficult to grow and study. Embryonic stem cells don't have these same limitations. Scientists are actively working to better understand how to work with both embryonic and adult stem cells. A small sampling of exciting work being done includes making stem cells that genetically match a patient, using stem cells to understand and treat cancer, studying how skin stem cells repair wounds and grow hair, and studying how embryonic stem cells make different tissues. The place to learn more about promising research is ISSCR's website, our most valuable and unique resource for information sharing. Created with the help of scientists from around the globe, it's the most comprehensive, accurate, and unbiased source of all that's happening in stem cell research. Made possible with the support of the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation International, ISSCR.org is user-friendly with up-to-date news features, the latest scientific developments, funding opportunities, and more. It is as comprehensive for scientists as it is comprehensible to the public. In the future, 
it's possible that stem cells could treat or cure many of today's diseases. I think that's, in many ways, the impetus for why people are in this field, is that they see what it can do for people they love. And I think that's true for many areas of medicine, but I think it's been a real draw here because so many people see the chronic diseases that have really very little option in terms of standard therapies as something that maybe we could make a difference. I think it's very important that scientists don't overpromise for stem cell research. That's one of my biggest fears. Um, we have to be very accurate in what we're telling the public. And um, that's incre incredibly important because very often we're trying to tell a story. But here we have to be very accurate. As a physician, we want to do no harm. On the other hand, you have many patients who are waiting for these therapies. And the longer we wait to start these experiments, the harder it is for those patients. And so I would like to move the research as fast as possible. I would like to see the therapies develop as quickly as possible. But we want to do it in an ethically important way, and we want to make sure that the research is done um, in a rigorous way. For now, it's essential that the stem cell community has a place to share their remarkable discoveries and that the public has a place to turn for stem cell education and information that's accurate. The International Society for Stem Cell Research. We believe in the promise and possibilities of stem cell research.